Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chris here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at sampling anything. Let's go. So we're back, and in today's video, we're going to be looking at a new creative musical idea, which is the idea of sampling anything. Now, what is sampling? It's basically where you record the sound and you can lay it on top of a keyboard and play the sound on different notes. Now bear in mind, you can also get a lot of different artifacts from sampling, you know, because if you're getting a note and you're playing it two octaves lower, it's gonna sound completely different. It's gonna, it might sound stretched. If it's the same length, it's gonna be a bit more granular and glitchy. So there's a lot of sounds you can get out of just sampling anything. So we're just gonna try sample one note of specific things and just see how it spreads out across a keyboard and, you know, these different sounds that we can get from maybe items that you've got lying about the house. So let's check it out. So here are a couple of things that I would consider lying about the house. My melodica. I've actually already done a video on a creative musical idea actually on, on using this. It's a similar technique but kind of a lot more expanded. So we've got this and we've got this bad boy which I'm actually quite excited to try because I haven't sampled it before. This is just a super old, um, you could say it's vintage ukulele again a nice little cheap instrument that i've got lying about that just does wonders sweet so i've got our instrument and i'm just gonna quickly go into my audio track and we're gonna keep this as basic as possible number one on the channel and then what i can do is i can go in and record a single note fantastic so i've got four notes right we've got all the four strings of the ukulele i've got my MIDI track down here, if I double click on that and I just drag this audio in, it chucks it into a sampler. Very nice, quick and easy. If I press record arm, you can see what it sounds like. Got those couple of notes in there. What I want to do is pick one of them. I'm just going to go with this first one. I can make that a bit tighter. Get it nice and close. And then there we go, that's it. Fantastic, I'm gonna stick a bit of reverb on that because it's actually quite nice. Lovely. So obviously we're just using one note. The sample is being stretched and played all over the place. Now part of the beauty of this is it's a short sample, right? So if I'm playing a high note, I'll just take off the reverb real quick. It's just speeding up the playback of that one sample. Because if I go really low, super long, deep sample, I'm just going to crank it in volume a bit. It's almost like a slow motion sample, you know, but then it gives you a bunch of color to the sound. Sweet. I'm just going to do a similar thing with the melodica. Let's try it out. Let's go into our audio track, record arm, play a little bit in. Sweet. So we've got three notes there. And what that allows me to do is again, just create a new MIDI track. Come on, shift T, drag that, oh, drag that into the MIDI track. Boom, and then I'll just go into this, select the start of the sample. We get this, crank that volume. Could get a bit tighter on the attack. Beautiful. <laughs> 
you've now got an 88 key melodica. And I can add a little bit of release to that. Sweet, I'm gonna add a little filter. Just to soften that out a bit. It's beautiful. You have so much capability with kind of creating something that sounds a bit unique with just recording one note. Let's see if I find a different note because that we're on C. So now we're on G. Bit quiet. Let's uh, let's try that third note which is also a C put us back in key pull this release back a bit Sweet. Okay, I just want to try maybe one more instrument. Let's see. There's the guitar. There's the synths. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to stick my voice in there. Why not? Get a little C going. <laughs> Let's do that. Maybe an ah as well. A little bit pitchy, but nothing we can't fix later. So if I chuck this, make one more go on. If I chuck this into the simpler, let's get that first ooh. You can see all my failed attempts. So let's get that first ooh. Sounds something like this. Put in the filter. So cool, you can see I'm clearly running out of breath there. So what I can do to kind of help with that is add a loop basically. So I can go in here, get loop going. You can see this is highlighted. And so now we can pick the length of the loop and where it's starting from. So say, let's find out. I mean, that's pretty good. I can add a little fade just to make it smoother. And then maybe bring that loop start a bit earlier. Fade a bit longer. And lovely, now we've got an endless ooh. You know, I just went, and you've got this. How sick does that sound? Like, <laughs> probably one of my favorite sounds when you can just get an ooh. I would really love to try the ah, because it's not really one I've, I've used before. So let's go, grab that ah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> quite uh, hard so I might just slow down that attack a bit let's see how this sounds it might take a bit of tweaking but let's see what we got
interesting. Completely different uh, texture entirely. A lot more brighter, a lot more punchy. But I do want to see, the last thing I want to try is we've been doing all of the sampling unwarped. So what that means is it takes the original sample uh... and it stretches it to counter for the change of pitch. So that sample is going to be long. You can just see it playing like how much slowly uh... it plays through the sample if it's low or if it's high. You know, but even that and ju even just hearing like the looping create some wonderful textures. Beautiful. But lastly, I just want to check out this warping. So what this is going to do is it's going to stretch all of the samples to be the same length. But what does that mean? It means that Ableton has to use an algorithm to figure out how the hell is going to stretch these samples, right? So click warp. Mm. You can hear that all the samples will now kind of move in this at the same speed. So any kind of infection, infections, imperfections in the sample will, will, will be carried throughout the same thing. So uh, you can hear there's a little, uh, a little bounce at the beginning, but any note I play, uh, they're locked in as opposed to this, which is, uh, you got two samples moving at their own time. It's a bit subtlety here, but what we're going to do is I'm going to chuck this on warp we can use one of the complex algorithms. And what that allows me to do is it gives me this formance, right? And with the formant, I can make something sound deeper or brighter. It's almost changing like the, the vowel, right? Like the, like the throat length, you could say, you know? So if I play a high note, that kind of sounds like if I was trying to reach a high note, but if I pull the formants back, we're in chipmunk territory. <laughs> you know, or I could go, full formant sounds a bit more natural but the beauty of this is when that's carried throughout the whole sample it can again apply some beautiful sounds to what we're already working with without the formants. Chipmunk territory. But then I say that the, the low range is my favorite when you've got the formants on zero. And obviously we're still using the, the R. If we flick it back to the U, <laughs> we get a complete, again, we get a completely different vibe, which is great. the envelope as well that does a little bit of morphing as well but like you know take some experimentation for sure you've got so many possibilities we've just used my voice a ukulele and a melodica the cheapest things you've got a hold of like and we got some really inspiring sounds out of it
get a bit more release going. And I mean, also just to kind of add to this, a beautiful part is that we get access to envelope, right? So the idea of changing how the synth moves. Right now it kind of sounds like a pad, where it got a bit of release, got a bit of attack, you know, so it's a very slow moving sound, but I could take this. This is the dry sound without release and without attack, right? On and off. But say I change the sustain, bring that to the bottom, bring this halfway and now add a little bit of release and now I've got a pluck you know from melodica can slap a bit of reverb on that again and this is something that you can't just you can't just take a melodica and turn it into a pluck but then boom you've got this from nothing and Bear in mind, I haven't even started processing the sound yet. This is just simply off using simpler and a little bit of creative, you know, creative modulation. So you got plucks, you got pads, you know, you've, the world is your oyster. Fantastic. That's basically it for this video. You know, it's fascinating to see what you can achieve from such a simple concept of recording one note and just spreading it across a keyboard. Again, the textures are endless when you can get the warp modes involved and there's also all the other warp modes which we didn't even check out. But if you don't know about them, you can look at my other videos. <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to let us know below what you thought. I'd love to, to read your comments and, and you know see what you guys are thinking about the videos. And don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe as it really helps support the channel. So thank you guys who have already subscribed so far. I really appreciate it. And once again, I've been Chris Vela and I'll catch you on the next one.